but it was the Ancestry episode where I just read the script and I was like, oh. Hey guys, Hector here on behalf of Nerdist and I'm here with the best, best, best character from What We Do in the Shadows, the actor who brings Guillermo to life. Harvey Guillen is on the show today. Thank you so much for talking to us, Harvey. Oh my gosh, thanks for having me, Hector. And I really mean it, you're the best. You're my favorite <laughs> character. And I was really excited when Nerdist asked me, like, do you wanna, do you wanna interview Harvey Guillen? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Thank you so yeah. much for that. So my first question for you, Harvey, is you guys got picked up for season three. Uh, the, the season finale of season two just recently aired. Do you know what's going to happen to Guillermo in season three? I don't know anything that's going to happen to Guillermo. I barely know what happens to him while we're shooting it. You know, uh, <laughs> I don't get the scripts ahead of time. Everyone thinks like, oh, you must know what's going to happen. I was like, I really don't. I really don't only find out when I go to the table read. They're very secretive about the storyline, which makes no sense for the actor not to know because we want to know where the character's going, but it makes sense to keep you on your toes. Um, you know, we also shoot out of order. So in one week, we might be shooting episode 201 and also 204, you mm -hmm. know, and sometimes we've shot like three episode scenes uh, from three different episodes in one day. So in the morning, you'll be shooting an episode, you know, a scene from episode 206. And then in the afternoon, you jump to 209. And then by the evening, you're back to 201. And so there's, for the, you know, for my character, for Guillermo, um, that's kind of important just because the trajectory of like where the story's going and 201, he's not the same person that he is in 205 and then 209, definitely not in the finale. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a back and forth with me with like mentally going back to the place that, <laughs> where that was. Um, I don't know anything that's going to happen. I have uh, hopes and aspirations like I always do for Guillermo, but what are your hopes? Can you share those? What are you? What is? What is something that you, as the actor and as a as a, a storyteller, something that you would love to see happen to Guillermo in season three and beyond? I mean, I would really love to uh, dive into more of his family. You know, we introduced his mom uh, this season, which was beautifully done, and um, and just his the, the world that he comes from. You know, and his uh, his his life at home and how he acts when he's around. Uh, different people. If you notice, Guillermo acts different when he's at work. It's a, you know, it's persona that when he's at work, he's like submissive, even though he knows what the vampires are saying are stupid and idiotic. He like literally just has to keep it to himself and look at the camera because remember, the only person who understands him is the audience. And so when he looks over at the camera, he's really winking at you or talking to you because you're like, you get this, right? Are you listening to this? Are you hearing this? Are you and like, that's the way that he connects to the audience is because he can't say it. Because if he says it, he'll get a demerit and he'll get demoted another year of being a familiar. And, and you know, he's already had several of those. And yeah. then keeps doing that to him. So he just does his job, goes to work, keeps it together. And then when he's at home or when he's with the new vampire group or the vampire hunters, the mosquito collectors of the tri-state area, um, <laughs> he's starting to become, come into his own. And he's more comfortable and he's getting compliments, which is new to him because, you know, it's like you know, living with those vampires, it's like eventually it could become a little bit of a Stockholm syndrome. You know, it's like you hear that you're like worthless or you're not good and you're only as stupid familiar. You start believing those things and you go and you hear another, you know, a group of people say, you're a pretty cool guy and you're funny <laughs> and you're this. And you're like, what? Like, what are you saying? <laughs> Harvey, I cannot wait to ask you this question, but Guillermo's last name is De La Cruz or of the cross. And Jermaine Clement said that you came up with it early in season one, right? That you asked about the last name of Guillermo and that they didn't have one. And so that's what you suggested. He said it was perfect, but couldn't tell you why. And you just said that you don't know the traje tra tra trajectory of the character like a season out. At what point did you know that your character was going to go the direction that he was gonna go in? Was it really like as soon as he learned his ancestry being a Van Helsing? Is that when like yeah. if a script read? Uh, pretty much. I mean, I remember just, you know, um, during the interviews when we have the, uh, documentary crew, you know, interview one on one um, for the characters. Uh, I just felt like, you know, one of the questions I think someone threw was like, uh, please state your name and like, you know, and you say my name's Guillermo and then I had no last name. And I was like, I have no last name. And it's like, a, I'm a human. Like, I should have a last name. Like, <laughs> and then it's not like, you know, Nander the Relentless, you know. Um, but I just remember going to Jermaine, I was like, can I give him a last name? Like, what's his last name? He's like, well, what do you want to call him? And I don't, I don't know why this came out, but I was like, De La Cruz. Like, I was like, that sounds really cool. Guillermo De La Cruz, you know? And he looked at me, he's like, what does that mean? He's like, of the cross. And he goes, yeah, yeah, that's good, yeah. 
sure. And I was like, okay. And I was like, that was easy. And like, you know, and I had that conversation with him and Stephanie Robinson as well. And I just felt like, okay, cool. He has a last name. I didn't know how perfect this was until I was at the table read for the finale of season one. Like I yep. went to the table read and we're like doing the, uh, you know, or not the table, the finale, but closer to the finale, uh, we did see, we shoot out of order. So we have table reads or so like we're shooting things all over the place, but it was the ancestry episode where I just read the script and I was like, Oh, Oh, and I'm like, oh my, this is perfect. And also the funny part was that even with that being said, uh, we went a whole season where people still didn't put the puzzle together. Like people were not <laughs> even like, even the joke was like that the vampires are like, Guillermo, Guillermo, like they don't even know my last name. And the, the hint was there for the last 11 years. My name has told you <laughs> who I am. And like, they didn't even bother to memorize my last name or even ask for it. If they would have, they would have been like, what does that stand for? Oh my gosh, you know, no. So um, perfect. It was so perfect. The, the, it was so perfectly aligned that, that I don't know how that came. It was just like kismet, like the way that I came together. And it was I perfect. love it. You knew the I character. Love- That's what it was, Harvey. You knew the character. And so, uh, so the other fun thing is you guys have been sharing some cool behind the scenes, like fight choreography stuff that you've been dealing with. And I want to ask about the training. Like, was it super intense? Did it jump dramatically from season one to season two? Was that all season two stuff? Yeah. So for season one, we didn't do a lot. We did a little bit of accidental, um, you know, stabbing of vampires uh, when we were at the um, vampire council and I accidentally killed one. And it, it just grew from there. And then season two, we went, you know, we were off to the races. Like it was season, episode one of season two. We were stabbing like 10 vampires. And and that, uh, I didn't know it was going to happen as well. Cause they didn't tell you, they don't tell you ahead of time. So I got to set and they were like, so here's what's happening. I read the script. Like, Whoa, he's going to be like, actually, he's like, yeah, yeah. So they gave me a personal trainer. I went to the gym like three or four times a week, which is hard after working like, you know, a 15 hour day. And then you have to wake up earlier than everyone else to go to the gym because you need to get that in. And I was like, I wanted to sleep in more, but it's like, you have to wake up an extra hour just to go to the gym, which is doable, which is proves the point that I guess everyone can work on fitness because. It was- <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the work, man. It adds so much to making Guillermo such a badass like we uh, we all fell in love with this character and then in season two it was uh it was such a great side of the character that we got to see so thanks for putting in the work dude Dude, really yeah, appreciate I, it. I didn't want to like fall short on that because you know the the i could see it happening two ways it was either going to be we're going to pull it 150 percent you know into it and it's going to be amazing or i i'm not gonna you know i'm gonna be like oh well i just let the stunt double do everything and then and then you get that reputation of maybe like, well, see, bigger guys can't really fight and you know, <laughs> can't really do it. And it's like, no, we can do it. We can do it. Just train. And the thing is that I did it really quickly with our stunt coordinator, Tig, who's amazing, who's like, you know, he's the best. Um, all the stunts you see are like his, you know, um, work and working with him, like, you know, that stunt that, you know, you saw on Twitter or on social media. That was the first take of learning that stunt in 45 minutes. And it was the finale was supposed to be one shot. Like it's just, it was nonstop. The way we saw it in the actual final product, we cut away to the vampires. We see their reaction. So it, you know, it looks like it could have been done in pieces, but it wasn't. It was all one, like seamless, like cohesive. Um, and so the, the actual rehearsal that you see, that's the video that was shot after learning the rehearsal for 45 minutes. And that was the first take at it. <laughs> So you can do action movies now. Great. That's great. Add that to your, that's it. That's it. (laughs) So you mentioned earlier, Harvey, that amazing scene where we're introduced to Guillermo's mom. And I read this in this fantastic interview. I wanted to ask how much input do you have on your character? uh, Like in his story, because apparently you got accurate Buñuelos for the set. Is that true? Yeah. So, you know, it was really important to me to be authentic to Guillermo and his culture and me being Latinx as well. Like I didn't want to misrepresent my community and have the character as well. Just, you know, we're in a foreign country, we shoot in Canada. Um, And so at one point I just, you know, talked to Paul and Stephanie and Paul was very great about like, you know, I went to his office and he was like, so here's the thing. He's like, we're gonna do this the last episode. You go back to your mom's house. We wanted like, you know, so he was, it was a conversation that was had and it was great to have that because it could easily have been written in a room by a writer who might not be Latinx or have experience with that community. Right. And Google translates something and be like, and then he says, mama, you know, or something. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, it was very important to get those, you know, uh, the terms of endearment, like, you know, we don't, 
at home, I don't call my mom, mama, like I call her ama or dad, uh, dad or papa, I call him apa. And so those are the real small things that for me were so like, you know, important that made a huge difference. Cause like I got such a, a big reaction from um, Latinx, you know, uh, fans who were like, thank you so much for saying that. I felt like I was home. Right. Hector. Like, yeah. It, it's like, it meant so much to me to hear that because I don't hear that when I hear a Spanish speaking scene or a Mexican right. household, they go like mama, cuando tu vas a, you know, and it's, very, <laughs> like, and it's we're like, you're looking at, that's not how people talk at home. So I'm really glad that they gave me the opportunity yeah. to kind of help write that scene a little bit. And it was just, uh, it was great. And so I, I, I really love that we got to show that. And the Buñuelos. Amazing, amazing touch. That was great. Uh, I, made Harvey, them. I made them on set because they, our, our set decorator looked it up and said, oh, these are the Buñuelos. And I was like, there's different kinds of Buñuelos. There's Salvadoranian, there's Mexican. And she looked up Salvadoranian. And so these are balls of dough, which are delicious, but they're not mm -hmm. Mexican Buñuelos. So then she had them like, flown in or something to Canada and I was like what and she's like yeah she's like oh man I'm so sorry because I saw them on set I was like those are Mexican buñuelos and so I was like I'll make them give me some flour tortillas give me some sugar and some, <laughs> some cinnamon and some oil I'll make them right now so I actually made the buñuelos on wow. set as we're like doing touch-ups and makeup and I'm doing like preparing them as we're going to roll because I couldn't live with myself knowing that there was the wrong buñuelos behind me amazing amazing okay Harvey the way that Guillermo looked up to Armand in Interview with the Vampire. Someone is watching this show right now and looking up to you. How does it feel knowing that you are somebody's Antonio Banderas? I mean, that's a, a tall order. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, I, I find a little bit of that in the sense that I did uh, Dragon Con last year. We did Comic Con San Diego. And um, I think that all the fans were so amazing, but the ones that really touched me were the people who came up and were young Latinx, you know, um, kids who were into the world of darkness and goth and vampires, and they said, and then they just said, "Thank you so much for." I never saw anyone who was in that world who represented me, and I see myself represented. And I thought that was so amazing to hear. And I was like, I didn't, you know, go out to be this like, you know, um, representation of uh, Latinx into this goth world, but yeah. I will gladly take it and 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 hopefully do justice to it and uh, continue to do that. That's awesome. There is a huge population of Latinx goth nerds. I love it. It's real. They're there. <laughs> and this show is perfect for them. Oh, yeah. the, art, the art that they've been doing like on Reddit, like I've been yes. like, on the show that I do for the pre-show before the shadows, we always um, spotlight an artist every week. And so it's been amazing to see cool. so many types of art, like crochet, like uh, sculpting, <laughs> like paper mache dolls. Like it's insane. It's great. That's so cool. So tell us about Before the Shadows. People can see all the episodes at beforetheshadows.com. Uh, yeah. And you did an episode and you were super sick when you did this little pre-show show. Oh, what happened? Oh, so I, the thing was, I was sick in the finale of season two. When you see the fight scene, I had the worst flu of my life. I had 104 fever. Um, I remember just sitting and saving my energy and Kyle knew the director was like, Hey man, he's like, I know you're sick. He's like, I know what you're doing. He's like, keep it up, man. Like, keep it, keep it, save it, save it. And then Kayvon would walk by and say the same thing. He'd be like, Oh man, I could see it. I've never, I don't like this. I don't like sick Harvey. I don't like <laughs> that because I'm usually really talkative on set. And I'm like outgoing. And this was the first time in my life that I was not saying a word. I was sitting in my chair, just waiting for the scene because I was saving every, cause I was going to pass out. And it was the last day of shooting. It was the last day of shooting the season. So we couldn't just like wrap up and call it a sick day and come back tomorrow. We couldn't do that. It was like December 22nd. Everyone's flying the next day to go home for Christmas. And I was like, just put it together. I just get together. And then I'm glad to report that looking back at the fight scene, you could never tell that I had 104 fever. <laughs> I was dying. Amazing. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So speaking of filming this hilarious, hysterical show, I got to know, do you have any favorite memories of shooting any part of the first two seasons, like a day or a night where you just laughed the hardest? There's got to be something so good. Oh man, I mean, you start getting the giggles late at night. Um, in season one, it was probably when uh, we did a scene with Kristen Shaw, who was at the Vampiric Council. And she's so funny, we're in an elevator, and we're so tired, it was five in the morning. And I think I looked over and Matt Berry just fell asleep in place, <laughs> just like <laughs> standing up. And then I looked and we were just waiting for the scene. That would be my favorite for uh, season one. Season two, I think that my favorite was a quick commercial that we did. We had about six minutes to shoot this commercial. Um, and it's do, we do it over the weekend. So we work the whole week and then shoot the commercials on the weekend. So that month is pretty hectic. We shoot like 14 days straight without a break. Like it just like keep going. Um, and it was just like Kayvon and I had four minutes or like, 
six minutes or four minutes. I was like, we were down to four minutes because we had done one take and they're like, we have to get in one more take and then we're done. And then um, he just improvised. It was a scene where he's like uh, reading res resumes or resumes. And he's like, oh, this one sounds like a rock star. He's like, what's that thing you taught me? That thing. And I was just like, no, no, no. And he's like, no, it's like this thing. And he's like, no, that thing. And like, he improvised that whole thing and I lost it. And we cut right at that moment because I could tell that the editors were like, cut, because right a second later, we were on the floor bawling and then we ran out of time. So that was like a <laughs> memory. Amazing. Well, you mentioned Christian Shaw. And the cast is phenomenal. And the guest stars are just as amazing. Mark Hamill, Craig Robinson, Haley Joel Osment, Benedict Wong, Dave Bautista, Tilda Swinton. Harvey, what was it like for these actors to get to work with you? <laughs> Pleasant, I hope. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I actually became uh, you know, friends with uh, Mark's uh, daughter, um, Chelsea, who's amazing. And like, he came on the show and did Before the Shadows as well. Uh, Haley, uh, I had worked with his sister before and he was great. We went out to dinner on his last night, him and I, and we become friends. He's always texting me. So he's amazing. Everyone's amazing on the show. We're just lucky enough to have so many great people come and play with us. Oh my gosh. That's, yeah, it is, it is fantastic. The cast is great. The guest stars are so, so good. And they play and they play and you guys play with them so well. Last question for you, Harvey. You were shooting Werewolves Within right before the quarantine happened, literally right before uh, when, what can you tell us about that movie and when is the movie coming out? Yeah, so they just picture wrapped on that film yesterday. I saw um, on social media through our director and our crew who was amazing. Uh, that's picture wrapped, so it should come out later, hopefully uh, next year, I think. Um, but it was such a great experience that cast, Makila Watkins, like it was just like, uh, Sam Richardson, like I can go on and on. George, like it was just an amazing cast and we we're in the middle of the woods and in, in the cabin and like, it was like camping with these people every day. <laughs> and it was just a group of comedians who are just authentically great people. And it's just like, and the quarantine happened as soon as we wrapped, like we wrapped on a, like a Wednesday or something. We came back to LA and everything shut down in LA that Friday. So yeah. it was weird to come back and we have the, like, we'll see you in LA. We'll have dinner and blah, blah. And like, um, but I can't wait to see them. They're all amazing people. And the, the, the movie's great. And I can't wait for people to watch it. It's going to be great. That's awesome. Harvey, you are fantastic in what we do in the shadows. And I am such a fan and you've made a lifelong fan out of me. And I can't wait for people to see Werewolves Within and for us to be able to see what we do in the shadow season three. Thank you so much for talking today, Harvey. This was fantastic. Oh my God, anytime. Thanks for having me.